Good morning everyone, and happy Valentine's Day. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. I'm Mystical, and today I'm going to be bringing you the latest in XR news. We've got a few new things to talk about, including some leaks in regards to the V50 PTC that have been found within the firmware, and an absolutely insane new headset. Now, that word has officially been banned off YouTube, I know. However, this one is pretty crazy, so let's jump right into the video. First of all, let's take a look at the V50 PTC. We now have a bit more information about it from Nyavr on Twitter. Quest PTC V50 also adds a bunch of new objects for the room capture, such as doors and plants. This one is interesting for the simple reason that Meta has been growing their arsenal of things that you can map out in your room, and this is probably meant for augmented reality, so that they can do occlusion without actually having to map out the room. Of course, the headsets automatically mapping out the room would be so much better, but unfortunately, that's not possible yet. So Meta is letting you map things out yourself. They've had tables and sofas for a while now, and a few other things as well, like walls, but now they seem to have added plants and doors. There also seems to be a scene recovery, where you'll be able to recover your room by adjusting the room placement, as seen in the video going above me right now, and realigning it. So if for whatever reason your room becomes misaligned and you want to recover that alignment, you'll be able to move that map over your correct play space, allowing you to recover different play spaces without having to remap them all over again, which is fantastic. Currently, I've personally found that if I map out a table somewhere downstairs and I ever want to go back to that, I have to remap it again because it's either out of alignment or just completely gone altogether. Multi-room support is dropping. You can have more than one room and name them accordingly with bedroom, living room, and office being predefined options. So this goes back to me talking talking about multiple rooms, say if I map out a table downstairs and then I come upstairs and I want to play something in my room and then I go downstairs again and that room mapping is destroyed. Well, now you will be able to save your room maps and then restore them, which is absolutely fantastic. This is a feature I have long awaited as it's going to be more of a quality of life fix than anything else. Okay, let's move on to the crazy part of this video. The part that I have been awaiting for a very long time. The part that a lot of you guys have been awaiting for a very long time. So on one end of the spectrum, we've got something like a Pimax headset. Absolutely massive, crazy FOV, crazy specs, connects to a PC. Then in the middle, we've got something like a Quest, a standalone VR headset. And then I feel like now we are jumping into a new era of VR. An era where PC VR will hopefully be revived, but it will also be tiny. And I don't mean Pico tiny, I mean your phone size tiny. Thrill's latest thumbnail sums it up pretty well. This thing is inexplicably tiny. I haven't tried it, I haven't held it in my hands myself, but what this is, is it's the big screen beyond. Yes, that big screen. The big screen that created the app for watching movies and videos with friends big screen. And this headset is like nothing you've seen before. Size out of the way, it also weighs 127 grams. At its thinnest point, it's only 24 millimeters, and its length is 143 millimeters, with its width being 52 millimeters. It's got micro OLED displays that produce breathtaking visuals and deep black color levels, razor sharp clarity, and unbelievable detail. Combined with pancake lenses that they custom make, Beyond achieves a two to three times greater visual fidelity than any other VR headset. Those micro OLEDs give you a combined resolution of 5120 by 2560 and run at up to 90 hertz. They give you 28 pixels per degree and a claimed field of view of 90 degrees by 93 degrees. Now, users of this headset that have tried it before have reported that the field of view is actually higher. And if you want to check out Thrill's video, which I'm going to leave right up here, from his talks with the creators, their aim is to under-promise and over-deliver, which is fantastic. So, you might be asking yourself, this thing seems pretty crazy, and I know you're going to want to know the price. The price is $1,000. I'm not going to do anything funny here. We're just going to jump right to it. The price is going to be $1,000. It's not going to be for everyone, but what are the downsides? Or also, the upsides, because depending on who you are, you're going to take this a little bit differently. First of all, the headset comes with no operating system of its own. It is entirely PC VR only. It's what allows it to be so tiny. It doesn't require a battery. It doesn't require its own processing power. Everything is done in the PC. What else? 
It's also base station tracked. Again, a massive plus side for many, and a downside for many. It also comes with no controllers of its own, and has no hand tracking, meaning that you will require some separate kind of controller input, whether it's index controllers, Pimax controllers, or the new ET controllers, which I've been checking out for a while now, but unfortunately with everything going on, I haven't been able to finish my video on them. And something that is completely mind-blowing to me, it is entirely custom made. There's no IPD slider, again, a downside to many. The lenses are custom made to you, with also custom prescription lenses that you can get with it in case you wear glasses. Because it's so small, wearing actual glasses in it would be difficult. The facial interface is also entirely custom made, meaning the headset perfectly hugs your face and allows for zero light leakage. Before you can even order this headset, you will be required to create a face scan, send it to big screen, and they will create a custom made face facial interface just for you, which will then magnetically snap on to the headset. Now, you can have multiple different facial interfaces, so I guess you could theoretically swap it out with someone else if you ordered a custom facial interface for them, but the IPD thing could be a problem. So with all that put together, they have created something truly unique here, something that has never been done before. This isn't going to be for everyone, in fact, far from it. With the fact that it isn't inside out tracked, comes with no controllers, requires a PC, and isn't really transferable between users, I feel like this headset is going to be perfect for the VR enthusiasts. For people that spend hours and hours in VR, I think those micro OLEDs with that combined resolution and the tiny, tiny factor will make it a super comfortable device to play VR in, as well as the fact that you can probably even fall asleep in it. I mean, it's it's so tiny, it blows my mind. Some people are going to see a lot of things as a downside here, but others are going to absolutely fall in love with this headset. Do let me know your opinions on this one down below. It's something completely different and something we have not seen before, so I'm very excited to see what people think about this new era of custom-made tiny VR headset created towards the user. Is this something you'd be interested in, or is it going to be a hard pass? Let me know down below. Moss is going to be coming to the PlayStation VR 2 with eye tracking, adaptive triggers, and more. We consistently like to talk about new titles coming to the PlayStation VR 2 on this channel. Titles that are going to take advantage of all the new features of the new headset, and apparently the Moss franchise is going to be one of those, taking advantage of things like eye tracking and adaptive triggers. There's a lot of new technology inside the PlayStation VR 2 headset, and I'm super happy to see titles taking advantage of all that new tech. I feel like if titles start in implementing it now, other companies are going to want to take that next step. If they see how well other game studios implement this stuff, they might really want to throw it into their headsets. Adaptive triggers, for example, I would love on the Quest and on PC VR. I think it would definitely boost that immersion to the next level, and I feel like the PlayStation VR 2 is definitely going to be a massive winner in terms of immersion. Talking about the PlayStation VR 2, Dreamcast Classic Comic Smash is coming to the PSVR 2 this year. Sega's futuristic block breaker, which you might remember from its launch on the Dreamcast in 2001 or the arcades throughout Europe and Japan, is being reimagined for PSVR 2 with C Smash VRS. The game is bringing an immersive twist to Cosmic Smash's low gravity, squash meets block breaker gameplay, including single player, co-op, and 1v1 multiplayer modes. That's what the VRS stands for, both virtual reality and Versus. I've talked about this multiple times before, but I love seeing older titles or PC VR titles being recreated in VR. It gives that boost of nostalgia. It allows the user to jump back into a game and relive it in the same way as they did in the past, but also in a completely different way at the same time. I'm not sure if you guys have ever hopped into a title like that, but seeing things that you find familiar, but at the same time find them much more immersive and actually being there is something that is really difficult to explain. And for those of you in interested in some tech stuff towards the very end, SK Hynix and LG Display will work with Meta to develop and mass produce micro OLED displays. In this triangle alliance, Meta is in charge of equipment setting and display design. SK Hynix provides wafers based on the design, and LG Display will deposit OLED onto the wafers. This is from Sadly It's Bradley on Twitter. I haven't seen micro OLEDs in any upcoming Meta leaks, but apparently they are working on them and micro OLED is absolutely beautiful. From my very limited playtime with it, it is absolutely beautiful and I would
would love to see it in more headsets. So I'm pretty excited about that alliance and can't wait to see what Meta wants to shove some micro OLEDs into. I'm loving these new company collaborations. Like last time we had Google, we had Samsung and we had Qualcomm and now we're having LG, SK Hynix and Meta. Some exciting times for VR are ahead and I hope you guys are as excited for them as I am. I'm Mystical. This was today's video. If you guys liked it, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess this button works too. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you so much to all the Patreons supporting this channel. You guys help me out a ton, pay my bills, pay my subscriptions, and helping me make these videos better. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord down below, check out our Reddit. I want to see you posting your spicy memes on there. And as usual, if you want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, dig my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.